What's going on, guys? This is another episode of the MMA Complex. My name is Josh. And I'm James. Back with a brand new episode. It's been a little while. We've been yeah. out of commission for most of December, I think. Yeah, we had a, a winter break off. A winter break. Yeah. Pretty much for the holidays. Uh, okay. New Year's is coming up yeah. this weekend. Yeah, Christmas flew by. I mean, this whole year flew by, but it did. Christmas has come and gone. Um, so I'm, I'm almost there. I'm, I'm almost reached my... I, I just want to get past New Year's, but... Uh, yeah, Christmas is great. I, I can honestly say that it, it, I had a good Christmas all yours, man. Christmas is cool, man. I, like, uh, spend it, obviously, for me, the holidays are going from house to house. I mean, that's basically what it was. Uh, Christmas Eve, spent it here at the home, at the house, invited a bunch of people over. Um, and then Christmas Day, spent it with my mom, and then went to a friend's dinner. And then that was basically it. Had some good gifts in between. James got me the... A little Luke Skywalker, oh, old yeah. man, Luke, old man Luke Skywalker, right there behind him. Damn it. The new addition to the set. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about Star Wars right now. Well, Star Wars is a, I mean, mixed reviews, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but before we transition, I'll just uh, mention one of it. So, uh, so Christmas Eve, um, I see her family has a big old party. Uh, Christmas Eve yeah. at her her aunt's house. Um, yeah, but y'all, I, I, I said, well, I wouldn't get wasted because I don't really want to be there. So I got, <laughs> I got, I got pretty much plastered. Yeah, and nice. And they did like a gift exchange, and so I think I got something that I didn't want. You're not one for the holidays. No, if anybody knows you, you do not that's like the I, holidays. That's why I drink that as much as I can, and yeah. I ate a bunch of food, so that was cool. The next day, uh, we met up later because I had, I, I was kind of hungover, and then we went to uh, um, the arcade, and I think. Wrong, wrong one, the one over near the over here, yeah, yeah, at the, yeah, in the mall area. Yeah, 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 yeah went yeah. there for two hours. Just been playing games. Then we went to Banana Bay, right? Nice, good right, restaurant, right good Thai food right there. Uh huh. And then at night we just went over to Noah because saw Star Wars. Nice, so nice. it's cool. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think for me, I spent most of the month, the time off from the last episode. I had a knee surgery. So that's pretty much. Oh took yeah, me yeah, up. yeah. Talk about that, man. Yeah, Cause, cause, yeah. I mean, since. I remember New Year's Eve, of, uh, like three, four years ago, we were about to leave the house to go to a party, and mm-hmm. your knee just kind of locked up, and yeah. it's been like that ever since, uh, yeah. and you finally got it fixed. I had a uh, knee surgery. I had issues with the knee for the longest four or five years, um, and it just finally gave out on me this like late summer. Mm-hmm. Finally got surgery on it. I mean, um, it was probably a little too late, though. I wasn't able to save that much of my meniscus. It took about... 70 percent oh my god yeah, i'm left with nothing i'm gonna be oh. a crippled old man oh, later on man um basically i talked to the doctor and he was like you can't you're not gonna be able to run marathons you're not gonna be able to squat tons of weight you know what i mean you're just gonna have to kind of take it easy like that low low weight high reps um and then kind of like limit the amount of running you do in your your routines mm-hmm. when you get back into working out um uh, but aside from that it should be fine. And it, that's just in order to like not give myself issues later on in life. Mm. You know what I mean? To kind of limit the wear and tear. Um, is there arthritis? Like, No. right? Uh, I mean, I think there's going to be some. Um, but I'm taking as many supplements as I can and trying to not to. Um, I'm, I don't do that kind of heavy weights anyway. And I'm not going to run yeah. marathons. Yeah. So I I'm should sure be good. But I just... Right now, I'm, I, I kind of walked, got off the crutches, and I am uh, kind of trying to trying to walk normal. That's my that's my biggest goal nowadays. Uh, How's the pain? Pain's not too bad. I mean, if I, I I might get tripped up here and there, and then I I might might sting a little bit, but aside from that, um, before like just walking, just that motion on your knee used yeah. to used to irritate me. It's mm. like give me problems. Yeah. Nowadays, it kind of just feels a little tight, so it's kind of still mm. awkward to walk. Okay. But, I was out for a while, man. First week, I didn't do anything. Second week, um, I started to walk around a little bit on crutches. Um, and then third week, started to wean myself off the crutches. And then now we're coming up on a on a month. Start um, Mid next week, it'll be a month. So you're going to go back to work next next week? Yeah, I'm going to go back to work next week. I think oh, I'll be sucks. fine. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I'll be okay. I mean, for most part, my, my job's mostly at a desk. I mean, for the most part. So I'll, I'll be fine. Yeah. But it is kind of sucked. To, you know, my vacation is over, basically. But that, that was my December. That was a big part of the reason why I think we we didn't do a lot of shows too was the fact that I was recovering half the time. Yeah. Um, 
But then, you know, it, it works out fine because, I mean, a lot of people are with the families anyway. So yeah, exactly. I exactly. mean, like, a, like you look at the most popular podcast, everyone's doing the best of shows. And yeah. They're not they, really putting out. They didn't, this content. whole month has been kind of quiet for a lot yeah. of people anyway. But, um, yeah, so today we had to, you know, we finally got around to it. I was able to actually walk the steps down over here to the yeah to the studio, which was a big path, mission. Yeah. Um, I like but, for watching you do that. Yeah, but we got a good episode today. Um, yeah. We have two guests. Um, to to end the year with, we have a Janae Hollow Point Harding, uh, a Bellator female of, um, I think a featherweight, if I'm not mistaken, uh, or yeah, I think featherweight or bantamweight. I gotta see. I think she's featherweight. And then Alejandra Lara, who is also uh, um, a Bellator flyweight. Mm. So we uh, we have them both on the show. Great guests, awesome. great awesome. people. Um, and then uh, you know we have a lot to get to, a lot to get to. So. This weekend is UFC 219, mm -hmm. big event. Holly Holm, Cyborg Santos, um, headlining it. This is in Vegas, and a lot of stuff going on. A lot of, a lot of. This is a big fight, big big fight. And um, I think we're gonna, it's gonna be anticipated. I, I like, I'm, I, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it, it just shows you like, uh, like I was watching, um, I, I was recently watching Rocky, five and Creed, um. And in both movies, you know, like boxing was huge back then, and and you know, you go look, like you look back at, at that time, or even now, like women's boxing is it's it's almost like the WNBA, like no one mm -hmm. crap about no it. No one cares and, about and then, it. Like, MMA, you know, it, it's something, you know. They like you see, you know, Holly Holm and Cyborg, two two women headlining a card yeah. with, with with guys like Anton Barbosa and Khabib, which is uh, it's it's crazy to to even like fathom that where we are in, in, in women's sports and yeah in, in mixed martial arts how important they are and, and, and like th just thinking like that it, it kind of gives you the goosebumps it does think that but yeah it's a big fight man like it's, it's a fight that i thought would never happen and to see uh two people like holly home and cyborg getting the cage yeah. it's gonna be insane and the, the the card is great we're gonna get to that later on in the show uh but I think the question for this fight is a lot of people are throwing around greatest of all time, greatest of all time. If Holly Holm beats Cyborg, is she considered the greatest of all time? If she beat Rousey and Cyborg, two of the best of all time? Or And does this affect Chris Cyborg as one of the best, if not the best, if she beats Holly Holm of all time? But first part of that question, Holly Holm, is she the greatest of all time if she beats Cyborg or no? Um, you know, I think so. I know, And I know Holly Holm lost to to Misha Tate, but then Misha Tate couldn't beat Ronda at all. Yeah. So, but I, I mean, I think so. I mean, like you look at she she beat Ronda at her prime, mm -hmm. and if she beat Cyborg. She'll be beating her in her prime. Yeah. And you got two girl, two of the you know arguably the greatest women fighters in MMA history, women's MMA history. Yeah. You, you can't you can't uh, deny that. You can't deny so, that. So, so I think so. I I would for me. Uh, I'd probably go against it, um, just for the fact that I think she did lose to Misha and she did go on a losing streak and yeah, she beat Rousey and let's say she does beat Cyborg, you know, it depends on how you, you know, how do you measure best of all time? Is it in terms of win streak, title defenses, who she's fought, who she's beat, mm -hmm. um, because you know, a lot of the times that, you know, well, Holly Holm lost a lot, in, at least in, in the UFC, um, when he compared to the other girls like Rousey and and Cyborg, she lost probably more than those two mm. against people that those two probably would have easily beat or have beaten. And in terms of title defenses, she's nowhere close to either one of them. Yeah. So I probably, I, I, I'd probably just put it as a matchup style and, and you know type if, of thing you know? if holly does beat cyborg she'll be the only female fighter in usc or in every history to have two thousand different weight classes yeah yeah that's a that's, that that that's a i mean deal, that's yeah. a big deal i mean in terms of like her uh her overall like record i mean it's a big deal it's a big accomplishment but if you're we're putting up against record of against record or even just you know, I think I, I'll chalk it up to more of just a, a, a style versus style, and then her style beat that. 
it's 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 tough because her record is nowhere close to the other two, at least in MMA. So it's mm -hmm. best of all time. I'll probably still put Rousey and and her and 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 Cyborg as best of all time. Mm -hmm. Before I put, I'll, I'll put her maybe third, even though she would get two titles and two weight classes, and she would be two of the best of all time. In, in their prime. Yeah, but yeah, in their prime. Um, but. I don't know if I'm ready to call her the best of all time. Yeah. Cyborg, if she beats, if she wins this fight, hands I mean, down, hands down. I think even if she were to lose, is still one of the best fighters of all time. Like I, I yeah, for sure. she's 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 up there. She's one 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 or two, but it's going to be a, a Mount Rushmore of female fighters. It'd be Cyborg, uh, Home, Rousey, and and, and maybe uh, Misha uh, Tate. I would say Misha Tate. Yeah, Misha Tate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely. So I think I wouldn't call her best of all time. I think, um, some of the other, you know, a lot of people out there too, I've, I've all considered it. It depends on how you, yeah, I mean, I can see your point. You, I mean, maybe if she beats Cyborg and defends her title four or five times, then maybe you can. You yeah. Can that. It, yeah. But I mean, the fact that she beat two of the best of all time, I mean, you got to give it to her. She's going to, she's up there. She's up on the Mount Rushmore for sure. Mm -hmm. If she beats Cyborg, even if she doesn't beat Cyborg and her career is not over by a stretch and by any means so we'll see we'll see how that goes um this also this weekend is Edson Barbosa against um uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov um the title shots are being thrown out there against Ferguson against uh probably not McGregor but against Ferguson because he's holding the interim um if Ferguson doesn't get McGregor right away and has to fight one of these two do these two do you think these two are the one the next in line for a title shot Whoever wins, um, I think Khabib is. I don't think I don't think Barbosa is just because he he, he fought Ferguson recently and he, and he, and he lost. And he lost, yeah. Um, but Khabib, yeah. I mean, that's that's a match that a lot of people have been waiting to see, including myself. I was bummed yeah. out when their fight got canceled because he couldn't make weight. Khabib yeah. couldn't make weight. So I think I think Khabib. I mean, you can't win. You can't deny it. the fact that he's twenty four and zero is insane in today's MMA era. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, Connor, unfortunately for Connor, it, I mean for everyone else in the division, his shadow will always be lurking. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't see Connor fighting in 2018. He's already he's talking about wanting a rematch with Mayweather. It's I mean, that guy. It, Not to mention Mayweather uh, talking about coming to the UFC. Yeah, all that all that junk. That, that was that, that yeah. was dumb. <laughs> it's still going on, I think yeah. actually. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think I think I think they should strip Connor if he doesn't fight. Within, I, be, I it's, mean, it's been a good amount by, of time to take it away. By April, yeah. it is a fight. By April, take it, take it. I mean, get, get rid of Ferguson. He's yeah. a, he's unanimous um, or undisputed champion. But I think, um, I think, I think if Khabib wins, definitely. If if Barbosa wins, maybe one or two more. One or two more. I I, I think, yeah I agree too. I think if if Khabib wins, I think he should get it. You know, he's been you know he's been on a, even though he's been at, in and out of the the past couple of years. Um, I think he, it's a fresh matchup. I mm -hmm. think he deserves it. We've been wanting to see that fight against Ferguson anyway for a long time. Yeah. And yeah, Edson lost to Khabib not that long ago, or to uh, Ferguson, Ferguson not that long ago. So I think, um, I think if he, uh, but if Edson beats Khabib in devastating fashion, then maybe, yeah. Then I would, yeah, it's a definitely argue with the case yeah. for him to get a title shot. Yeah, I so agree with that. I think either way, However, whatever happens on Saturday, I think either one. But I think could be for sure Edson, depending on performance. Right. So, um, you want to get to our first guest? Yeah. All right. Let's get to our first guest. So, our first guest is uh, Janae Hollow Point Harding, uh, featherweight Bellator, just newly newly signed to Bellator. She hasn't even uh, made her debut yet, uh, but she's uh, been in the game for a, a stretch. And you know is making her uh, Bellator debut early 2018, mm -hmm. and here you go. It's first chance to get to know uh, Janae Hollow Point Harding. Okay. All right, so Janae Hollow Point Harding, uh, how are you doing today? So you recently signed with Bellator. Um, congratulations, by the way. Um, how are you feeling you so at the much. moment, and with a new, you know, being able to announce it and all that? How's everything? Yeah, going? it's. <clears throat> It's really good. I've actually known one for a long time. It was in um, kind of like we're doing all the contract and sorting out the deal and all that sort of stuff. And it was yeah. back and forth. And um, it originally happened 
when I first started it when I was in Thailand so mm-hmm. that was really good and it was like not too far off when I couldn't um fight on the contender series yeah. so it was quite um good news once I realized that I couldn't get to fight on the contender series I had another opportunity come up so yeah. I was really happy about that and now it's really good that I can get it out in the open obviously my close friends and all that and my coaches knew about it and we were talking about it we we're like when is it all going to happen and come to kind of like life and it's yeah. funny because you sign the contract and it's like you know that it's real because you've signed the contract. I mean, that's pretty much as real as it gets, but Instagram yeah. kind of makes it feel a little bit more real <laughs> yeah, yeah, once they post it up. Cause it, yeah, because they, they, they announced it first, right? Yeah. 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 So um, it's not like you sign the contract and you send it away and then you kind of just like, well, I'm now just waiting for – kind of like that yeah. confirmation that it's all set in stone and you're all ready to run. Do they and tell yeah, you- that was kind of like, do they tell you not to say media. anything? Do they tell you not to yeah. say anything? Yeah. They just tell you to hold off on any announcements or anything like that. So I just had to kind of keep my social media on low profile and just keep it with the people that knew my manager and my close friends and coaches and family and stuff. So it was good. Yeah. Was it was it tough uh, to keep that a secret or or were you just like um, itching to kind of just get it out? Kind of. It was like everyone everyone that needed to know knew. So yeah. like everyone that obviously will need to know about my camps and whatnot and mm-hmm. where I'm g- going to head next kind of n- new. So that was good. But I did want to tell everyone, I just got like, I did, I like all my friends at home. I, and, um, cause I'm obviously all the way in the UK at the yeah, moment. So yeah. it was just like the easiest way to broadcast it to all the people that I want to know is through social media. So yeah. I was kind of sitting on it and just waiting till I could tell everyone. Yeah. Cause there was, um, I, yeah. And, and congratulations on this. And cause I know coming off of the, you know, the, contender series announcement you know that was a big thing for you and then losing that opportunity due to just visa issues basically yeah. i mean it, it was that disappointing moment for you and then getting this news you know was a great yeah it notice. was it was like a when you're sitting like when i knew when i found out about the contender series it was only like a week and a half of, like it was about like a, like less than a week um before i was gonna fly back to vegas from thailand yeah and then it was like um maybe three weeks later I found out about the Bellator thing but like when you find out about the contender series you kind of just like that was my whole like concentration my whole energy was put into this contender series put into this fight yeah. I was going to fly back to Vegas I'd already sorted um flights like um we'd already sorted like everything like that was going to happen the week leading up we're going to get there earlier blah 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 mm-hmm. like who my corner was and everything was all pretty much set in stone and yeah. all my energy and training was concentrating on that and the diet and obviously all that sort of stuff and then it just kind of drops out of nowhere yeah you kind of just have to keep in your mind like just trust in the process and just yeah. continuously tell yourself like something else will come up it's fine it's just how the journey's going to unfold and that's just another hiccup and it's no big deal something else will come up we just keep waiting on it and lucky enough for me it came quite like sooner rather than later so I was, how I was long did how long that. was it in between uh did you get the yeah, I think it was like signing? i think it was like a month before okay. my manager called me and said that they were asking uh, um and we we're in talks mm-hmm. so yeah like about that so i was just kind of like training and obviously just like trying to keep my head up but I could eat more and all that sort of stuff so that was kind of the positive before I found out that (laughs) yeah yeah yeah, I was back on track to something bigger and something like the same kind of velocity that the contender series was yeah because I like I knew myself that once I got in the contender series that kind of exposure and that opportunity I would have like definitely left there with a contract and Mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff I I was very confident in my abilities and then in that opponent especially and all that sort of stuff so I was really happy about it and I kind of had it all set and I was like oh yep like and then there was the UFC Sydney um not too long after so I was like most likely be my UFC debut and so I had it all kind of like set but that's the kind of that's the thing with the fight game you can't really get too set with anything honestly because like injuries pull outs shows can be cancelled Anything can happen, yeah, especially yeah. with visas and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. it is what it is. But, yeah, it was a bit of a, like, a limbo area, and I'm glad it wasn't longer rather than, yeah. like, what it was. It was only short, so I was, I was lucky. Yeah, and so you, you spent a lot of time in Thailand at Muay Thai, at Tiger Muay Thai. Uh, how long were you over there yeah. for? And uh, this, You spent most, um, of, most of this year, at least, in, over there, right? How long yeah, did you spend over I, there? Um, all up, it would have been about six months. Okay. I did jet off to a couple of places in between. Yeah. Um, because I fought in Hong Kong, came back, and then 
Um, I went to Singapore, came back, and then I went to um, Las Vegas for the Contender Series and stuff like that. So there was a couple of like blocks that probably amounted to about a month all up um, yeah. where I was out and going back to. Um, I didn't actually expect that to even happen. The plan was just to go to Thailand and um, get that like like Asian exposure just because mm-hmm. there's so many promotions across all of Asia, including yeah. like mainly China, but um, like China, Japan and Singapore and all that sort of stuff. So I was like, I was looking for that exposure. And then uh, like, I think it was seriously like three days after I got there, they were like, do you want to find Hong Kong? And it just from there, it just kept going, kept going. Um, yeah. and unraveling more than I even expected. I got my manager, Danny, and then that obviously amounted to a couple more opportunities and meeting more people and networking more and yeah. all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I spent six months there and it really served its purpose. It was like perfect for what I needed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think now it's time to get back to, um, a little bit more of a staple like environment yeah and you're originally from queensland right <clears throat> yeah 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 hey, were you um, born and raised Coast. and i was born, born in new zealand okay um and then i was there for about 10 years and yeah. then i moved to australia i moved to brisbane originally when i was 10 and then i moved down to the gold coast about two months after i moved to brisbane yeah and then yeah i spent um the last 13 years in gold coast yeah and now you're in Edinburgh, right? You're based out in yeah. the UK, right? Um, how, do, how does that? How was that transition moment, going for you? Um, it's very cold <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for, for one. But yeah, so I went from Thailand to Edinburgh. Um, I've come here. Um, my partner's from here, but it was also I got to earn money and all that sort of stuff because you can't travel and run around the country yeah. for long enough before you start running out of money. And obviously, the in and out of fighting isn't quite as much as um it's not very even so (laughs) I came over here I've been um doing a little bit of work and um training obviously full-time as well but just balancing it and then um I've kind of found like it was good to be here for Christmas and I'm going to be here for New Year and all that sort of stuff but I'm going to head back to Australia um and base myself out of Oz again because that was originally the plan I was only really meant to be here for like two weeks Mm -hmm. and I was meant to head back to Thailand but it turned out that my lease in Thailand had finished while I was over here. Yeah. So it was kind of like I go back to Thailand and I'm just really having money coming out. I'm not really having that money even back of in. it yeah. Yeah. coming in at the same time. Yeah. And I had – I'm really lucky. I came over here and I got invited into a gym. I got welcomed into the team. I – um, I get a lot of one-on-one coaching. I, the teams are my size. Like most of the guys are my size. They're a little bit younger than me as well. Yeah which means they're just like like very strong and like there's there are a lot of amateurs but they're also like really high skill level and I was really lucky so I was what team uh, are you working with not, over there <clears throat> I'm with head hunters at the moment okay under, yeah yeah. Um, right. yeah Alex mm-hmm. Sneedon mm-hmm. um he's been really really good in helping me out like I met him I messaged him and then I met him and then just from there we just clicked and They've invited me in really well, and I've been cool. like really lucky. So yeah. I've been comfortable staying here for a little bit longer, yeah. Because I know that I get good quality training and all that sort of stuff, yeah. and so that's why I've stayed for longer. And then we obviously had Christmas and all that sort of stuff because I didn't have any. Bellator hasn't told me when I'm fighting, so okay. I haven't really had any, um, like any kind reason of to like need to prepare, run. like yeah, go on a, a yeah. camp and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like comfortable being here yeah. and just getting everything back to kind of square one, being in a like a first world country yeah. for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite fun. <laughs> yeah. And um, what do you make of the? Uh, well, they they haven't announced your your uh, a fight for you, a date. So you don't have anything set at the moment. But um, did they give you any information in terms of when they would like to see you fight? Or did they kind of give you a timetable of when you can yeah. expect it? Well, Danny and I obviously want to push for as soon as possible because yeah. I haven't fought since May, so it has been a bit of a um, layoff, like yeah. unintentionally. And so I think we're just going to have probably a look at the um, American visa mm-hmm. and whether or not that's still an option or whatnot, or I might have to maybe have an international fight. I would most likely put money on that I'll be on the first international card because it would yeah. be – probably a little bit easier just to get that visa and um get all that sorted and being over in the uk and um in australia and stuff like that will be same same whether or not i get flown from there or here wherever i am based so i think it would be the first international card which they haven't announced yet but um i'm 
going to guess that it will be probably in the first three or four months of 2018. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, How many, uh, I don't know if you can go into detail in terms of your contract, like how many fights did they give you and how many do you expect to, you know, you know, fight out in the, in this year alone, 2018? Yeah. um, I'm aiming to do since I've signed so late in 2017, I'm aiming to, get at least three out because I'm in a minimum of five in the next 22 months. So okay. that's an awesome yeah. um, feeling for me to know that I have that kind of staple and consistency in the next, in 2018 and 2019. Mm-hmm. So I'm really happy about that. So yeah, the goal is to get hopefully three by the end of 2018, just because I've had that layoff. And then I've also, um, like it's already really been a month, I guess, yeah. since I've signed almost. So it's kind of like 2017 out the door and then yeah, should be able to squeeze. Yeah, three many, into next year. Um, in terms of sponsorships, are, are you kind of fishing around for those, and and how easy yeah. are they coming along? Because now you can say, yeah, I'm a Bellator fighter, and you know. <clears throat> yeah, Danny does do a lot of that, and um, we are going to start working on that. And I, I guess we have to kind of like figure out um, where and what. I think once I've figured, once I've gone back to Sid, like gone to Sydney, yeah, um, gone back to Australia and done my base, I'll probably aim at more like maybe local and then go further from there to yeah. like figure out who we're going to have on board and what's going to happen. But yeah, we're having the bill at all name and promotion behind me. Definitely. Makes it a definitely helps. Difference. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Are, are you the one, are you type to make a resolution for the year? Like, are, are you, do you have set goals for the year or what's it, what's it, what, what do you, in your, what's like, in your mind right now? I've always been one of those people that's never made a resolution in my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Cause, um, I guess, like, I'm not one of those people who's going to be like, I'm not going to drink for 2018 or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I don't really have an addictive personality. I don't feel like you should put that in, like, into the, like, you should just do that as a thing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, I have written down all my goals and um, what I want to pursue and end up achieving by the end of next year. Um, so I've obviously want to achieve those three fights. I want to increase my, my volume on my social media and um, just just my name at in a general sense yeah. in my brand. So we want to get more networking, more experience. And then on top of that, I have all my skill sets that I want to improve and then yeah. like weight and all those little things. Those How's little the so- things that are specific to MMA. No, the social media game, is that something that's uh, comfortable for you or is it like more of like, you, cause you got to put yourself out there and especially if you want to get your name out there too. Yeah, yeah, it is such a hard thing. Cause it's like, you definitely don't want to sell your soul. And then <laughs> yeah. at the same time, it is that comes with a game so there's you can't ignore it you can't just avoid it otherwise it really does hinder you yeah. a lot in this kind of business in so this kind of business, um yeah. it is i'm a, like a terrible person to just remember to post like <laughs> i'm good at aesthetics and i'm good with like um having an eye for photography and obviously um, like i'm in that generation that was just bored up with computers with, yeah with a phone stuff. in your hand yeah 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 so um, it's <laughs> yeah. not like i'm bad at it but uh-huh. it's just necessarily just remembering to do it and just how are you gonna like what plan of attack you're gonna have and like uh-huh. what kind of persona you're gonna pursue like what strengths that you're gonna gravitate towards I'd, yeah it's kind of like such a funny game because but i just i just want to because it's even funny like with the bellator signing people still like doesn't matter what you do you're gonna get like negative people coming towards you and saying, yeah. oh, you're, you're worrying too much about what you look like or whatever. Yeah. And I like, I'm never going to be, I, I highly doubt I say this now, but I'm never going to be that person who puts heaps of bikini shots on booty pictures up yeah. or anything like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. But I like, I love to be social at the same time. So yeah. it's kind of like, you've got to find that heavy medium. And then like the, my main drive is MMA, yeah. but that is my life. So it's not like I'm ever going to not have a photo of me punching a pad or, Whatever it is, yeah. like I'm always gonna have that because that's all I'm doing. So yeah, it's kind of should just come naturally. I with, think with obviously being very naturally photogenic, I'm sure a lot of hate comes your way in, in the comment section. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's like it's like I like I don't wear a lot of makeup. I don't have any plastic surgery or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. But people are still gonna be like, oh, you care too much about your appearance and all that sort of stuff. And I'm like. I guess so. Like whatever. Maybe like, it's filled with haters. They're just filled with haters. That's so how funny. it goes. Yeah. It's like. You, there's nothing you can do about it like there's no. people that i know for a fact are on social media specifically trying to use sex appeal as a as a sales thing and yeah. as their brand and that's yeah. fine like that's yeah. what you choose to do it doesn't necessarily help 
the stereotype and all that sort of stuff but mm-hmm. like that's everyone's choice but it's funny yeah. that people still waste energy on dri- like driving towards those people that aren't trying to do it and it's yeah it's just like it's just how it is I, like all i'm thinking like we thought it was funny because we thought it was like this is the beginning of the the haters <laughs> as per se like i didn't think i ever would have that but it's like going to yeah. start now it's, it's, yeah, only it's definitely going to start now it's only going to more yes, yes exactly <laughs> yeah. um, so it's like we always knew what was happening yeah so uh, in terms of like opponents have you looked at the landscape of your division have you had your um, eye on anybody in particular I've known a couple I mean I've fought a co- I've you fought, fought a few of them right? yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so I I do know who's in the division I I'm not I'm not ever like I'm, I don't really mind who's put in front of me because I know eventually uh, like maybe within these five fights or after these five fights, I'll have Julia Butt in front of me or whoever has the belt yeah. at the time. So yeah. that is how it is. And I think like for my first couple of fights, due to my uh, experience as per se, even though my numbers aren't really there, I know that my my quality of opponents have been there. So I know that I'll have um, maybe a debut at the same time. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll probably get put up against it or someone who's only had like one or two fights in Bellator or in the promotion. So yeah. I know that my first couple of fights won't be any big names. So I'm not really like holding my fingers crossed to get yeah. anyone massive. So I'm happy about that. And mm-hmm. that's all going to be great for my development and everything. Like you can never get too much cage time. I'm not someone who wants to rush it. I don't want to get a title shot tomorrow. I'm not yeah. in any kind of... Um, ideas about that so i'm just happy to just take the processes as it should be and then um that first performance will obviously prove whether or not i'm gonna get a big name afterwards or continue on a couple of more developmental fights so yeah. it's all just how it will be yeah, I and i, th- I think the good. move for you over to bellator instead of um maybe going to the ufc route right away is i think in, in terms of exposure sponsorship um opponents yeah. It, I think it all mm-hmm. works in your favor. I don't Definitely. Know if you, you, think, I, you agree with that, yeah. Yeah. As soon as I started talking to Danny about it, I was like, this is perfect. They yeah. um, will definitely help me progress, definitely help my brand, definitely help um, just give me a little bit more exposure. And I'll yeah. get used to media, I'll get used to social media, I'll get used to like the haters as well. I'll yeah. get used to everything. And yeah. I'll get to be under the big lights and I'll get to be treated by big promotions because I I have only had one international fight and even though I've fought quality people both of those people were like 20 minutes from my house so I was just lucky enough that they came to me on those times and um and I was happy enough that like yeah I fought a girl in UFC I fought a girl um who's been in Victor and girl who's who's been Mm -hmm. in Bellator but um I'm definitely happy enough to take this stage I'm young um like I'm really want to get this right the first yeah. time i don't want to have to get dropped and then come back again that's not at all how i see this going so this is perfect for me i think yeah. and what got you into fighting in, in the first place were you always in martial arts as a young as a kid and or did you kind of just fall into it or how did you get exposed to it um i did start in karate yeah. um, when i was like uh i think a year after uh, we moved to australia so i was about 11 and then um, I did that for about four years and I achieved my black belt and I got to do all that. So I got to do competitions and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then I kind of um, didn't find it as challenging anymore and just found it a little bit westernized and maybe not – as I was growing older and maturing, I kind of realized that it wasn't as, like, disciplined and I wasn't as good as I thought I was kind yeah. of thing. I was just kind of getting – you pay the money, you get your belt <laughs> – sort of thing and then uh, yeah which is kind of the thing with yeah with some i did taekwondo for like six years and it was almost the same thing yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. so you're like no this isn't really the karate kid kind of like mentality that i thought it would be but um then it just so happened that my i was talking to my mom about and then she was working around the corner from an mma gym at the time Mm -hmm. we went in um we got to obviously talk about jujitsu and then all that sort of stuff my coach um there was like really inviting and I just fell in love with the place. And then I was kind of doing that through school. I wasn't doing it full time because I didn't really have the time to work, do school and train. And then as soon as I finished school, I was kind of like, this is what I want to do. And this is what I want to pursue full time. And that's what I did. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So, I mean, in terms of like this year, I think it's a, it's a big year for you. I think it's going to be a big year for you. I think you have a lot of, you know, a lot of things ahead in the future. I look forward to, you know, finding out when your next fight's going to be. That's going to be a, a nice yeah, announcement and same. who your opponent will be. 
But um, yeah. I want to thank you for being on the show. It's been great talking to you, great to get to know you. I think the fans would love to get to know you and listening yeah. to this, watching this. So um, mm-hmm. do you have any sponsors right now that you want to give a shout out or any social media um, kind of where the fans can find you? Definitely. Uh, everyone can just find me at my name on Facebook and Instagram. I don't have Twitter as of yet, but yeah. it's all J-A-N-A-Y. You got to get on that Twitter game right there. Yeah, Yeah, apparently. Snapchat, all that. I was talking to Danny about it. (laughs) Yeah. I used to have Snapchat, and then Uh I deleted it because it was just using way too much data. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And I was never connected to the internet because I was always traveling. So I was like, this is too difficult. But, yeah, I'll probably get back on all of that, especially in the new year. You'll see a lot more social media presence and Mm -hmm. a lot more stuff. Um, No, like, massive sponsors as of yet. We're going to sort that out in the new year as well. And then, yeah, we'll have a proper team starting up as of 2018 all right great all right thank you for being on the show it's really great talking to you great meeting you um best of luck happy new year yes thank you and uh, we'll see hopefully talk to you soon yeah Yeah, awesome thank you so much for having me all right take care all right and that was janae hollow point harding uh battle tour featherweight and thank you for her to being on the show she's Mm -hmm. making her debut early next year and you know wait to see that and get to know her follow on social media all that Great person. Um, next up, on terms of topics, uh, Bellator's Jimmy Jimmy Smith, right? Yeah, Jimmy Smith. Yeah, yeah. Um, leaving the leaving the company. Yeah, made his announcement earlier this week, and there's. I mean, it seems like it was mutual. He didn't renew his contract. His contract is up, and it looks like. I mean, the rumors are. He might go to the UFC. Yeah. What do you there's, think? There's, uh, there's rublings. Uh, are, you know, like, you know, he's been in Bellator, I think, for nine years. Um, he's he's definitely uh, one of the faces of Bellator. He's a, uh, I mean, a lot, of people, a, a lot of people consider him like the. He the, was the Rogan of. The, the poor man's uh, Joe Rogan. But, yeah. But I think, I think he deserves a bit more respect than that. I think, I think um, his commentary is definitely different than, than Rogan's. And, you know, mm-hmm. and he, Jimmy Smith does something that no one does. And that's he. He not only calls the fights, but he also judges the fights after each round, which yeah. is very hard to do. So yeah. props to him for doing that. But um, yeah, he's a he has a great mind uh, in, in MMA, and and he has a martial art background, you know, to 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 back it up. But and I think I think he'll be a good a good uh, addition to the to the UFC family. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, considering that Joe Rogan has one foot out the door, um, you know, he doesn't do international pay per views. No, so maybe Jimmy Smith can do that. But I know, I know the UFC is pretty much grooming a lot of ex fighters or current fighters, that, you know DC guys like that. Uh, yeah, Paul, Fal- F- Falder, Paul Felder, who I think who Paul Felder, who does an incredible job. Great, he's awesome. I love. I, yeah, I, I think love his he, commentary. he's become one of my favorites. Yeah, him and the other guy that he did with the Cub Swanson and uh, oh yeah, that, that, the European guy. Is it the European? I don't know guy? if he was European. I think he was American, but I don't mm. remember. I don't know the guy's name. He seemed as the first time I saw him. Oh, okay, but those two together have good chemistry. Yeah. Good chemistry, yeah. and I was like, I haven't seen a team that good since Rogan and 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 Goldberg. I mean, they have so many uh, fight cards and so many places to visit, so yeah. they can just have like their own like their own set uh, set team for different yeah. things. Yeah, and there's there's good people out there now, but uh, with Brian Stangon, I mean, Paul Felder, I mean, he came out of nowhere, man. But he's yeah. he just I was really impressed. I was really enjoying his yeah. stuff. His stuff. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah. So I think I think he'd be a great addition, but um, I think I think when when Rogan I think I think this gives uh, you know less pressure on Joe Rogan's back to mm-hmm. maybe if he just want to resign it, it it'll be okay because you know Jimmy Smith could easily fill his shoes. He's like yeah. a Joe Rogan anyway, so yeah. So I think I think um, I heard that they're gonna make he's gonna make an announcement tomorrow, which is uh, um, the thirtieth yeah. about his future, and I think. If the Romans are true, I think they're going to make that announcement and do the broadcast tomorrow night. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, yeah, he did start as a as kind of like a. Unfortunate for him, he did kind of start it as a joke. Yeah, in a way, because it was Bjorn dressed like Dana, and yeah. then he had the shaved head and almost similar build as to Rogan, and you and, know and, and, his commentating and, yeah. was good up on par with Rogan, yeah. so it was almost. A, yeah, because like he always wore like the jeans, and he always wore like like the the dress shirt with no jacket or yeah. no tie, and yeah, like one button open. They were <laughs> the they top. were literally when they first started. When he first started, it was they were literally like it was like a like a poor man's version of the UFC, like from Dana White how he dressed, Bjorn dressed that way, Jimmy Smith dressed like Joe Rogan, 
it was just like it, it was a, to each yeah other. it was identical and it was kind of a joke at first and then kind of jim smith i think along the way and through the years has kind of developed him himself into his, his own personality and got a lot of the respect i think he deserves yeah so why not rogan wants to only do the local u.s fights jimmy smith wants to you know he's Great person and, and, to add on to the team. Yeah, and Joe Rogan has a lot of plates that, that you know, a, a lot of different guys that he serves, mm-hmm. and he has his podcast of his own. He has, he's a comedian, an actor comedian. He has a lot of things on his plate. Yeah. So uh, I think when he's ready to leave the sport, I think it'll be a good hands with Jimmy Smith. But yeah. unfortunately for Bellator, it's it's gonna it's a big blow to them. Although they got Mike Goldberg, but they they need that second guy to fill Jimmy Smith's shoes now, and I think. I read somewhere that this year has been Bellator's lowest rating TV rating year. Um, I mean, so but th- then it, again, they're gonna re- reinvent Spike TV. They have that deal with Paramount, so yeah. I think they're gonna um, make it look different. But I, yeah. but 20, 20, 2017 wasn't too kind of Bellator. Yeah, I mean, it 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 was and it wasn't in a lot of ways. I guess with the ratings, it was hit or miss, and then with um but they did have a big year in terms of signings in terms yeah. of you know promotion but i think i think in I, the I, mma community yeah i least. think i, I think out of um all their signings i think i think maybe rory Donald is the only successful one yeah the most successful one and i mean maybe bader bader yeah bader even phil davis for a short time yeah so they they had some good guys and benson henderson has really only been yeah the one that's kind like, of like he's like one in three i think yeah he has not performed at all to expectations and yeah. Um, you know, he struggled in UFC on the way out and he's struggling even more so in Bellator. But, um, yeah, I'm glad I'm, if Jimmy Smith comes over to the UFC, great, you know, add another commentator. Um, and I think the U, you know, Bellator, I think would probably find somebody else. I'm sure they'll get somebody good. So yeah. we'll see what happens. It's unfortunate for them because they lose a really key commentator. Yeah. Or exactly. their face of commentating there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and also this weekend was Ryzen. Uh, that took place in Japan over there. Uh, one of the biggest news to come out of that card was obviously that the, there was a Ian McCall stuff. I don't know if you saw that at the weigh-ins where, you, you know, the one the guy, his opponent slapped him in the back of the head and then Ian kind of <laughs> socked oh him in the chin. God. And then, and not, not, to, not on top of that, Ian got cut, I think somewhere. I got I, I to gotta see uh, updates. He got cut by the ropes. The ropes cut him, so the fight had to be stopped because not because of the opponent, but because the, the ropes. ropes what? The rope cut him, and it, they did, the doctor didn't let it continue. Like I don't know That's where it super cut him. Weird. I don't know if it cut him in the body or the head. I got I got to see, but I don't think it was the head. Yeah, um, it's so a, it's just a continuation of bad luck for Ian McCall. Yeah, yeah, man. But I mean, he looked good at the weigh-ins. He looks in shape, you know. But he looked good. But uh, there's uh, Gabby Garcia was one of the biggest things that come out of there. 26 pounds overweight. Jesus Christ. Against a 52. How? 52 <laughs> yeah. How do you do that and show up? 52 year old opponent. And the fight was pretty much scrapped. But um, Gabby, who is a legit uh, BJJ athlete, one of the top female athletes in BJJ, a monster of a, a, a female. I mean, just it, ginormous. Uh, but, you know, it, she her transition in MMA has been kind of more of a freak show. Mm-hmm. And, I think it seems like it's going to continue to go down that path. Uh, do you think, do you see her career gaining any legitimacy or do you think her just being a, a freak show from here on out? I think, I think like, like, like Ryzen, I think they're both a freak show. Yeah. Uh, but they could have, they some Japan, people over there. I mean, Japan is wanted to do that anyway. I mean, back in Pride, they, they had in the contract, you go ahead and, and jack up as much as you want. Yep. But yeah, Gabby Garcia, unfortunately for her, you know, she's a great, Athlete in Jiu Jitsu, but when it comes to the MMA world, all the MMA fans see is her going against these, you know, ladies who aren't even supposed to be in the cage or, yeah. or, or a ring for that matter. She's fighting a bunch of, you know, older women, women who are, are, are Bob Sapp like mm-hmm. and are just going to lose. And um, I think it makes, it makes Gabby look bad too yeah. for, even, for taking those fights and not trying to like, um, Go to a, a one FC or or even a ballot to test her skills. Yeah, but just firing these like nobodies. I think I think it makes her like her her legacy or her her MMA career so far look like horrible. 
and and I think yeah, I, I just think that it's gonna look bad. I mean, how can you show up and be over twenty six pounds overweight? I mean, what the hell is that? <laughs> you're, mm-hmm. you're you're supposed to be a professional. I can see like you know five pounds max, but when yeah. you, when you when you're gonna when you know you're gonna be weighing in and you, you're over twenty six pounds, that's that yeah. Why it's even sad. show up? Yeah, yeah, it's sad and it's sad. I mean, because like there has to be some kind of diet or, or preparation for a fight. Yeah. I guess he just thought, "Oh, he's fifty-two year old. I know how to train." When that just that was the cause of it. But yeah, yeah, I think I think both Ryzen and, and Gabby look bad. <laughs> or even look bad in term for her in terms of her career. I, I mean, I was kind of thinking about it too. I'm like, I I, I would give her. I probably have to cut her some slack, I guess, because she's so big. Yeah. That finding an opponent is probably very difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, so take anybody you could get. I'm I'm hoping that's her argument for for fighting who she's fighting is the fact that she can't find opponents. But if it's not, and she's going for these people that are 52 years old that are have no fighting experience, you know, and her first opponent was old. Her second opponent, I think, was a professional wrestler with some training, and her third. Which is this one? I think is is was an old is an old fifty two year old. Mm. So it, it I mean it hasn't been good, and so I don't know if she's handpicking these people or this is all they have. Um, because did she fight someone off the crowd? Did she fight somebody off the crowd? Maybe someone else. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe I, maybe I don't know. I wouldn't put it past her, but um, it. So in that sense, it's I, I can understand it's difficult for her, uh, but to show up twenty six pounds overweight is is no excuse, and it, it's just like. Like I think her fight was scrapped. She made some apology. I think in the ring, I don't remember what the apology was. I have to go back and watch it. But it was just, it's sad. just crazy. Just sad. Yeah. Um, and she's like really. I think her best friend is Chris Cyborg. So it's kind of interesting. That I want to. I want to know how that affects Chris Cyborg to see her her friend being pretty much dragged through the mud by her mm-hmm. own doing, really. Um, uh, but then interesting. you know, Cyborg's fighting this weekend. So uh, you want to get to our second guest? Yeah. Let's get to our second guest right away. Alejandro Lara, Azul Lara, Colombian uh, Bellator flyweight. Had her pro debut last month or not too long ago. I forgot when the fight was. Um, I think it was December. Actually, no. It was earlier this month, December 9th. Forgot the date. Um, Victory, submission, rear naked choke. And she's on the show. Great person. Great, great interview. Get to know uh, Alejandra Lara. Alejandra Azul. Lara, thank you for being on the show. Bellator's newest flyweight. I mean, you made, you burst onto the scene. Great debut. How are you doing today? <laughs> thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy for everything that's happening right now. It's happening right now. Yeah. And because this is the the result of all the effort and training of, of all this year. Yeah, yeah. So you, the holidays are right now. Obviously, you just had Christmas, and then you have New Year's this weekend. Um, how, how's it been going for you? You've been spending time with the family. I know you're in Colombia right now, right? Yes, I'm in Colombia right now. Uh, I, I want to, to be with my family these days. Yeah. And and I'm thinking now and start my, my next preparation for, for my next fight, and that's what I have in my mind. Yeah. Now, talk, talk about your debut. Um, you you came on, at, it's your first time um, in Bellator. You got a submission victory. Um, how did that feel to be on the big Bellator stage and get a win? Um, how was that for you on a big, you know, big fight, you know? <laughs> everything, everything, including the preparation, because I was doing my training camp at Rufus, yeah. uh, Rufus Court in Milwaukee. Yeah, but... Um, I was expecting for give a great show, mm-hmm. and it was that 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 happened. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I was really secure. I felt prepared for that fight, and it it was my my opportunity to to show to all the world that Latino America also have a talent and mm-hmm. good people working for me. Yeah. In the top. Yeah. So she, in the, in the fight, did she feel like how she, you thought she would feel? Was she strong? Was she, did your, and did your game plan go kind of like how you planned? 
Yeah, well, all my training camp, I was thinking about her, yeah. obviously, because I was studying her 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 game mm -hmm. and her style, and I was expecting for for what happened, and I just used all my my skills in in the in with my wrestling and with my jujitsu, and it's a, a thing that. Maybe nobody was expecting that because yeah. my style is, is karate and, and that thing. And mm -hmm. that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> how, 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 how satisfying was it for you to get the finish and not leave it as a decision, you know? <laughs> yeah, of course, it's what, it, it's what you want when yeah. you fight. And I love jiu-jitsu now. Yeah. Uh, but it's it, that is uh, a new a new level for me, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like in the video game, mm -hmm. and uh, it it was what we planned, and yeah. everything was great. Yeah, because your, your your ground game looked uh, a lot better in terms of transitioning. You you capitalize really easily. It can't seem very easy for you to get her in a bad position. Did it seem like it was? Did it feel that easy to get her in a bad position? You th did you expect? a tougher fight at on the, the ground at the first round it was uh hard for me mm -hmm. i don't know if you if you see yeah, i, yeah, I it get a yeah. bad position mm -hmm. but i never lose the the control when i my my, my mind it yeah. was calmed and i was uh listening to my coach yeah and that uh let me get out of that position and then when when i'm out i'm up mm -hmm. you know yeah and that that's it i i don't know i was expecting maybe it no a, it was a close fight it was a close fight up until you finished it was a close fight yeah but it was mm -hmm. did you were you hoping that you get just get the finish did your coaches tell you you need to get a finish or how did it or did it just pre opportunity present itself uh we talked about uh before we before i i fight before mm -hmm. the fight yeah and uh, about that about penalize her yeah and to take her to the ground yeah. and that was in my in my mind all, all the time yeah and how how was it was it nervous were you nervous going into your debut because a lot of people <laughs> they get nervous when they go on big stage you know i did look nervous <laughs> i don't know <laughs> no, you didn't look nervous because... no. I really done the, I don't know. I mean, you of course you feel nervous mm. before you go to the to, to the cage and yeah, yeah. everything. But I was like really happy. It it was the moment that I was expecting for a long time and I don't know, I just that done felt afraid or or something. No, yeah, yeah. I just was Happy. Because yeah. she she was a popular fighter. Do you think they were maybe overlooking you a little bit because you're a new of fighter? Course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> and I'm the first Colombian, the one of, of the uh of a small group of small Latin group. American mm -hmm. fighters. And I I knew that uh, everyone was like, uh ah, oh, she's gonna fight with Lena. Oh yeah, she yeah. Uh, yeah. and I didn't pay attention to to that thing because w when I was uh, walking out of the cage, it was uh, definitely it, it was <laughs> completely different the, the relationship, uh, the the relation with with people, uh -huh. with the people of Bellator, with everyone. Yeah. Nobody was expecting that I I won that fight. Mm -hmm. That i'm sorry if i if i no 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 i understand yeah. no, no, no. no 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 you're doing very well yeah you're doing really well um and that, so what did they tell you afterwards uh, the, any of the bellator people behind the octagon at, like were they like congratulating you that they tell you you know we got some big plans yeah. for you yeah they, they were surprised <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. and i just uh feel that Every that that was how would how would be I don't yeah, know yeah that's how they expected it or that's how perfect. you expected it yeah 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 I I didn't uh, feel like underestimate yeah uh, correct I I feel that that underestimate but 
that that makes me feel like stronger or or better after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Um now for you're obviously uh, you know from Colombia, you're from Latina. How does that how does that motivate you in terms of being a representative? Yeah. Um it's a big pr pr I, I feel very proud mm -hmm. of being there with the name of Colombia because yeah. it's no one else there with the with that flag mm -hmm. and uh, also also Latin America also Mexico because I, I trained at Mexico with, with Alexa the Grasso and all of yeah yeah and, uh -huh. and I feel that I have the opportunity and the uh, also it's it's that pressure of mm -hmm represent and give all of the of the best things that they they give me in in every part of in every part that I trained yeah, yeah. and um and the satisfaction of say of, of say I'm doing a, a good work we also have a good trainers good people and mm -hmm. that that's good and, and I think if people like look to get to know you and they they see on your Facebook or your Instagram you're into a lot of things. You you obviously do a lot of aerial uh, acrobatics and stuff. How did you get into that? It's a, it's amazing stuff. <laughs> I know everyone uh, was like say uh, everyone said sometime like you can't do all of that things because you have to focus on something yeah. and that kind of thing. So it's my life, <laughs> but but I am a very multifaceted. <laughs> woman mm -hmm. <laughs> and i absolutely also love the uh our artistic uh disciplines yes and when i entered to the university i start to do aerial silks mm -hmm. uh, and and it was like uh like easy because i was strong because of my other sports you did martial arts yeah karate, yeah kung mm -hmm. fu and also uh, everything yeah and then I start with this then I discovered pole dance and mm -hmm. I fall in love with the with the high I love to be the, yeah, <laughs> the again, high I've seen some some places where you're in a tree and you're hanging from the trees and <laughs> it's, it's crazy stuff yeah it's my other profession to, yeah, to yeah. climb <laughs> <laughs> I always make that joke but it's true yeah yeah <laughs> Actually, it is yeah um, so I have Almost the the same time fighting mm -hmm. uh, than you've been training the time that. that I'm doing the aerial things. Yeah, and it's it's made of silk. Is it the silk? Silk, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. And how long did it take you to get like up and higher and higher? Did it take you a long time to get all the way up to like big heights of a tree and all that? Did it take you a long time, or did you learn it? Right no, now? that's. That's the easy part. Yeah, but no, it's the hard part. But you know, if you have experience climbing trees, uh -huh. it's uh, yeah, to to climb and then to put the 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 silk yeah. to make the the how do you say? Like, okay, the, the, that, to wrap then, around and to tight. Like, yeah, I get you. Okay, it's not easy, but I can do it uh, fast. It's easy now. for you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it, you're you're new to the division. Um, the division itself is very new in terms of the for Bellator. They're promoting it a lot this year. The crown champion and everything. Um, how did uh, what do you make of your division and the fact that Bellator is really pushing the flyweight division and promoting it a lot? How do you how do you feel about that? I feel that it's a very good moment for me mm -hmm. to to start for uh, for start my career, and I feel that there are. A lot of girls, at good girls, who who are um, starting in in this sport now, yeah. thanks to to all of, of the things that we were the opportunities. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I feel that I can uh, be a, a champion in this category, mm -hmm. this class, and I have to work for it. Yeah, that's it. Do do you think um, maybe in 2018 that this might, you might get a title shot, or do you think uh, how many fights do you have on your contract, and how many fights do you think 
it will you need to get that title shot? Uh, I really don't like to to put uh, dates in, mm. in that in that, but my my contract is for five five fights. Five fights. Oh, that's good. That's good, man. Uh, yeah. But I I don't know. Everything cool happened. Yeah. And I don't want to anticipate to that. Yeah. I just want to to work for it and, and wait. On. Yeah. Yeah, uh, do you have anybody in mind that you would like to fight? Any opponents? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I have to watch, and, and I like to to wait for what the the destiny have for me. Yeah. How soon would you like to fight again? How soon will you be ready? Maybe maybe March. Okay. March, April. Yeah. Have they contacted you at all to give you uh, maybe uh, options? For a fight? Um, not yet, not, not yet. yet. I'm expecting for them. Okay, nice. Um, well, I want to thank you for being on the show. Um, it was great to speak to you. Good to get to know you. Um, do you have any, um, you know, any sponsors that you would like to shout out and maybe tell the fans how they can find you on social media? Uh, thank you. Um, you can find me in the social media as Aleja Su Lara. It's for Azul, that it's my nickname. Yeah. <laughs> for blue. Yeah, blue is your favorite color. Alejandra right? Azul Lara mm -hmm. in Facebook, my, my, fan, my fan page on Facebook. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much for the support, for inviting me. And yeah. that's it. All right. Greetings. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah. Happy New Year. Uh, take care and hopefully speak to you again. Thank you. Thank you. And that was Alejandra Lara Bellator. Uh, flyweight, newly signed, uh, had her pro debut recently, and thank you for being on the show. Great, great person, great interview, all the way from Colombia. Wow, awesome. Um, let's see, let's get into our 2017 awards. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first annual. Yeah, first annual. Okay, so best, just, now we're, we didn't do too much preparation in terms of yeah. picking who these people are, but yeah. in terms of best fight, off the top of your head, favorite fight of the year? Fight of the year, ah, oh, Jesus Christ, ah, oh, that's tough. Um, oh. if you want, I could go back and on some of these cards. I, I gotta say, Mac, the Max Holloway and Jose Aldo fight. I think, I think that fight, I was like really, yeah. like throughout the, the fight, I was like on the edge of my seat. Um, and I love the finish. Um, I, and I love Max Holloway. I think that fight made me, like, made Max Holloway my favorite fighter. That that is, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's a, that was a good one. That was a definite good one. Um, I'd probably have to go with Bisping and St. Pierre. Oh, yeah, that was a good one, too. That was a good one. That was a good just one. see just, GSP back in the cages. Just to see it. I remember I hadn't been, well, I hadn't seen, like, like, like a, a card in front of, like, a large group of people in a long time, and that might be, you know, the, the added influence for my decision. Uh, but I got to go with uh, that fight because that was memorable and it was, I hadn't been excited or even excited beginning during and end of a fight mm. in a while like that. So I would say that card, if we were going to pick like best card, that was a pretty good card of the year. I, I'd say that's the best card. Yeah. But fight, that's probably my, my favorite fight of the year. Mm. Yeah. Um, let's see. Best submission. I'll have to go back to that same fight, Holloway and Josie Aldo. No, 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 no. I'll take it back. There's a fight. There's a fight that that, that uh, oh, where McDonald and and uh, and uh, and Paul Daly. Not only because and I'm picking this one because the the way um, where McDonald transitioned to that choke was like it was it was it was like 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 water, man. He, yeah. He's a, He's a, he's a total pro. Like I was, it was amazing to see. Yeah, the way he, he got mount and then like the way he 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 let him slip and then he just got got his back and touched him out. It was yeah, that was, it was yeah. awesome. Um, for me, submission. It was toss up between Brian Ortega, oh, and Cubs yeah. Swanson. You can go back on a pick and if you want to think about it, while well, I, I tell you mine, Brian Ortega. I, yeah, you probably go Brian Ortega. Hands down, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the way he, because I mean, like, I, like, I've never seen him before. I never, or Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse. I, I think I'm going to go with Mighty Mouse. Yeah, that's a good one. 
I gotta go with Mighty Mouse. That I one totally was, forgot about that one. That one was uh, like I was just insane. I was like, oh my god, he ch- like tossing him up, catching him in midair, and in, in, in like, a in arm like stuff. That's like there. yes. <laughs> Brian Ortega, uh, notable mention. Brian Ortega, yeah. just the switching of the grip. Yeah. Like in air, yeah. In air, hanging from Cub Swanson, insane. Um, most shocking moment. Um, it could Rose, be inside, outside of the cage. I think I think Rose beating. Uh, um, uh, Joanna Janjicek. I think I think she coming in that fight. I mean, I remember leading up to that fight. Joanna was was dubbed, you know, the best or the greatest ever. And yeah, uh, you know, she was untouchable. She had confidence. She was she obviously looked past by Rose, and then Rose is coming in as a total underdog, and she didn't say not one word to Joanna during the the build up, and then she let all talking in the cage and the way she. Mm-hmm. Not not only did she win, but the way she finished, she won. It was uh, it was pretty remarkable, and I was I was completely in shock. That 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 that's a good one. That's a good one. I think I had one earlier today. I forgot. Damn. Um. John Jones popping for steroids. Oh man, yeah. When yeah, outside he, of the cage moment. I yeah, I mean, you know, no, it's a good one because it, it's good because you know John Jones had beat had just beaten DC, yeah, and we, everyone thought that he's he's back on oh, track. He's back, is it? And then his redemption story has been told, and he's it was up shocking again. yet not shocking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that, that is a double thing: shocking yeah. yet not shocking. Um, breakout fighter, uh, Volkan, Volkan. Yeah, I mean. Uh, in the beginning of the calendar year, we didn't know who the hell this guy was, and then he came out of nowhere, knocking people True. out in the first round, two, second round. And now here he is on the eve of fighting uh, the greatest, one of the greatest uh, heavyweights in, of all time in DC, yeah. and he's going to fight for a title. It's insane. Breakout fighter. That was tough. I mean, yeah, that's a tough one. Kobe's a good one too. I mean, Kobe's a good one. I mean, no you go Kobe, it, you go, I, I'd say Brian Ortega. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one too. I'll say Brian Ortega. Yeah. I mean, he got he won a, he got on everybody's uh, radar after this fight. I mean, I think he was everybody knew of him, but now I think people are looking forward to seeing him next year. I would say Brian Ortega. Yeah. I, I mean, or, I mean. That's a good one. I, good think, one. I, think, I think he's in a, Fight the winner between Frankie and, and Max Holloway. That, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, right there. Last one, fighter of the year. Do we say knockout already? Do we say knockout? No, no knockout. No, no. no, go knockout. Do we say knockout? No, not yet. No, go. Um, for me, it's easy. You know, Francis knocking out over him. I was going to pick that. Yeah. I was going to pick that one. That's, uh, I, I, think I, I think that's everyone. That's, I think that's, that's everyone. pretty universal. Not, not because it was a surprise, but because how it was done. The way the way over his neck yes. to snap back, and then, because I think people suspected that that would probably be the likely outcome if it were to go in that, but just the way it happened, and uh, yeah, it was great. Yeah. yeah, and seeing Novrim knocked out for like two three minutes, cold, yeah. he wasn't moving. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, it's kind of scary, but yeah, yeah, it was kind of yeah. Def- I'm in agreement with that one. Um, and then fighter of the year, there's a lot of people for that. Uh, I'm picking. That. I'm picking. You know, Max Holloway. I think. I think Max yeah. Holloway. He. He proved that he's a force to be reckoned with at 145. Mm-hmm. He's uh, his personality changed, but in a good way. He he's brash, but not too brash. He he fights. His style of fighting is a fan, is very fan friendly. He brings it. He's not afraid of anybody. He's not one. A lot of fighters these days want to pick the money fights where Max Holloway wants to build his legacy, and that's that's mm-hmm. rare. Yeah, in 20, 2017. So Max Holloway is my pick. Fighter of the year, I'd go with. I'd probably go with DJ, because he broke the record. Probably, you could argue pound for pound best of all time, um, and he's had some good good fights. So I'd say DJ, mm-hmm. Max Holloway. Close second, close second. If yeah. not, if not neck to neck, damn neck to neck. Yeah, that one's tough. Uh, other mentions, you could go Ryan Bader, mm-hmm. had a good year. Yeah. Um. So you go a bunch of people. Rose. Rose winning the title, fighter of the year. You could give her there's so many. Yeah. But I'd probably go DJ. It's hard it's hard to argue against that, yeah. his accomplishments. Mm-hmm. 
So that's yeah. Those are those are uh, 2017 favorite favorite guests of the year. Guests of the year. Oh wow. Um, my man Wei Ting. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Yeah, that favorite, was a fun one. Yeah, that was a fun one. Um, uh, favorite guess. Yeah, we've had a lot. We've had a lot. <laughs> we've had a lot. Damn. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna go with. I'll go with Wei Ting. Let's give it to Wei Ting <laughs> and give them a, give a plug their uh, their new show. Oh yeah, so so unfortunately for Wayne and John, they they got they got canned by the Fight Network, and uh, they were doing these uh, Renegade uh, reviews on their own. And um, but during those re- Renegade reviews, they were kind of planning something out, and uh, they have this new website and new sh- uh, um, home for Wei and John called Post Wrestling and and I found out why they call it Post Wrestling. It's it stands for there's like there's abbreviations. It's uh, it stands for Pollock Offsets Ting. Offsets <laughs> Ting. <laughs> nice. Post nice. wrestling as a post uh means but it, it it's it's pretty it's pretty crazy. I mean um it kinda remind us remind me of us. Yeah. Um Wei was kinda mentioning how like he has to like come up with a logo he has to like have ideas and have, yeah. they're kind of like spitting off each other and like he's, he's saying it's, it's 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 hard work. They're going independent, doing it, doing yeah. it on their own, and spending their own money. But they have a Patreon and people are, I think I think with the first four minutes of, of the launch, they're getting like thousands, thousands of dollars. I mean, we if we do that, <laughs> yeah, let's we'll see what happens. It'll be it'll be a yeah. month and we'll probably get five bucks. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's cool. I mean, yeah, it's cool. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes or or, or YouTube. Um, just post wrestling. Nice, nice. Yeah. Let's go on five picks. Ryzen was this weekend. Um, but let's go with UFC 219. Mm. Cyborg versus home. Um, kick off the main card. Carlos Conda, Neil Magny. Oh, man. I've seen that, that breakfast of Carlos Conda guy. Ugh. I want to give him a hug. Um, I, I feel bad for Carlos Condon. And <laughs> Did you watch it? You watched it? Yeah. I had to turn it. I had to. I had to. I had to turn it off. Yeah, it's sad. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna go for Condon, man. My heart I'm, says Condon. I'm gonna go with Condon. I want to see. I want. I like the guy, man. He's one of my. He's always been one of my favorites. I'm gonna go with him. I like Neil Magny, but uh, Carlos Condon. Yeah. I'm pulling for you. Uh, Cynthia Cav- Cavillo versus uh, Carlos Barza. I'm going with Cynthia, man. I think I think I think the Yuana fight kind of broke Carla, and she hasn't been really the same. Um, she's been she's been hardly fighting. Yeah, and I, I think Cynthia is hungry, and I, I think she can beat the former champ. I'm gonna go with Cynthia too. I think she's young, hungry, and yeah, definitely could beat the former champ. I think she's well rounded. I think people are not giving enough credit to her striking, and I mean she trains at alpha male, so that ground game I'm sure is tight. So I'm gonna go with Cynthia. I think she's a killer. Yeah. Um, Let's go, Mark uh, Dakisi, Dan Hooker. Dan Hooker. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go with. I want to go with Dan. I like the way he looked at the the weigh-ins. Mm-hmm. So did I. Um, I'll probably go with Dan. I'll go with Dan. Um, Edson Barbosa could be. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna like. I'm not gonna. So it's tough. <laughs> it's tough, but I mean it's not, it's tough, but but it, it isn't. Okay. I think Khabib's gonna win, but I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna pick uh, Barbosa. I uh, think I think Barbosa lands one of those kick, uh, liver kicks. People it's over. people are not crediting Barbosa enough. I think in this fight, yeah. Even his fight with with uh, with Ferguson was a war. And yeah, they had to really battle it out. I mean, and not only that, but he, like, do you remember when when Khabib fought Johnson? Yeah, Michael Johnson he got tagged, tagged, tagged him. And if if and, Barbosa can at least. Oh, stuff man, most of those takedowns or at least you know, stay out of the gives, him that, gives him a body kick to the head that's over I'm, or the, I'm, to the to the to the liver i i i mean could be a favorite obviously but i'm, I'm gonna, gonna go with edson i'm gonna yeah, go edson all right man yeah. we're doing pretty <laughs> we're <laughs> we're like, go that's good I, I've, I've been um yeah i like them both i like them both um they're both really good fighters but I, I, i'm leaning towards edson i don't know why yeah uh cyborg versus holly i think i think this is a fight where we're Probably gonna pick different fights or fighters. I don't know, man. I I think this is a. Oh, I don't know. Home. I'm home? gonna pick home. You're gonna go home. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go home. Oh. I, I got I I'm gonna go cyborg. Yeah. I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna go cyborg. I know she's a favorite, but I, I yeah, I think I think I don't want to buy into the marketing the marketing and I feel that's part of it is playing out in this because I'm really I'm leaning towards Holly. It's convincing me that Holly can do it. Yeah. And I'm thinking it is a chance, I think. I wouldn't be surprised if she does. Um but I, I, I can't it's hard to bet against cyborg. No, it is. And and I I, I do I do think that she might. I, I so I want to pull it off. Yeah. I'm going for Holly for the shocking moment and yeah. the fact that. I mean, she can make history. Yeah, I think so. I think so. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go cyborg. I'm gonna go with the favorite cyborg. I say she keeps it. I say early TKO. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, man. 2017 in the books. 2018. We'll see you guys next year. Um, for the MMA Complex, I'm Josh. And I'm James. And before we go, we have a special guest. Oh yeah. Let's get you out here. Come on. Oh yeah, my so my nephew is here. He has a he has a YouTube page that he's super uh, proud of. So he here he is. Uh, he's gonna plug his stuff in. Here, here. So you can sit, oh. sit on his lap. Or... Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is uh this is Felix. Felix, uh, tell everyone we can find you on uh, the YouTube page. All right. So um go um hit and go on YouTube and uh, I have two YouTube channels and one is Francis um. And I'm still um, um, making videos on that, but um, I'm trying to make one as a uh, like a video, a good video one. But I have no day to do it, but I'll do it someday. And yeah. I have a different um, one that is um, that's my second channel is the the plushy word. For some reason, I put word, but and, the plushy um, word. Yeah, the word. The plushy word. Yeah, I, I, I try to put world, but uh-huh. instead I wanted to put word. Oh, that's okay, okay. The I plushy word's unique. Yeah. Yeah. So the plushy word and then your name, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. And then, and then how can people find you on Instagram? Oh, well, um, you can just um, type Felix, or you can just type Sonic one Felix zero nine, and then you just find like Sonic just running real fast. Nice. Right. And nice. And that be me. All right. Nice. Tell everybody Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> All right. See you guys later. All right, see ya. Bye.